So this is my skinning station. This is where I do beaver, muskrat, mink, etc., etc. I do have a pulley system uh, right up there that I use for coyotes. It doesn't work the best. It's something I'd like to improve on, um, but it's what I have for the moment. Uh, I put a gambrel on after I've got their back legs skinned out, and that way I can raise and lower them. So, anyway, I've got the four muskrats from today and the ten from the day before yesterday. They're going to get skinned now. I am going to set the camera up and I'll show you probably one, maybe two. So anybody that doesn't want to see that, probably now would be a good time to skip out. Um, I won't do a lot of um, fleshing shots and stuff like that. Uh, if there's something unique or something like that, then I'll probably bring you along and show you what what I find different um, but for the most part I know lots of people don't like to see the skinning and stuff like that but for those of you that do um, you can watch the experienced trappers that can teach me something please by all means do I really like constructive criticism um, I brought all our traps in you know, I could complain and say that I didn't have a very good muskrat season and it must be this or it must be that. But in reality, I probably would have caught a third more rats, if not more than that, if I had done my due diligence, had all my traps tuned in and stuff like that. <clears throat> Last fall when I put them away, I didn't take the time. Uh, for a couple reasons, probably. One, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so, maybe that's something we can figure out together. And, uh, I don't know, time and cold weather and stuff like that probably was a bit of an influence. Anyway, I'll see if I can get the camera set up. Anybody that doesn't want to watch skinning, now is the time to, to check out. Talk to you later. <clears throat> okay, hope I have the camera set up well enough so that you can all see. So, just taking a regular leg hold trap. I'm going to put the one back leg in. So then I'm going to start at the other back leg and make a ring around and start from there, go straight across to the tail. Make a ring around the tail. Follow straight down to the next leg. Make a ring around there as well. Then I just start pulling the flesh away from the skin. Once you're started, you can just keep pushing in between. So I didn't get right up to the tail edge, just give it another little cut so I don't tear it. Right up to the next leg. Peel it off of there. Now that I have the back done, I just start to turn the rat inside out. I push his head up through his skin and keep working on the back. The stomach is 
stomach lining is very thin so it's very easy to puncture and then it just makes a bit of a mess so just keep working it away and chest cavity away once you're through pull the legs down break the next leg off then work your way back this is where it's very important to be just gentle take your time otherwise you tear the stomach lining and it just it's kind of gets yucky it's not going to hurt the hide by doing that but so there right up to the vent and this is the stomach side anyway, so I don't mind cutting that last little wee piece off. Also gives them a little bit more of an inspection hole, because these hides are left hide out for in. Now I just pull a bit of this fat back. Sometimes I just use a knife and push it back off the cheeks. So then I don't know whether you can see this or not, but there's like little white lines here that shows you that that's the start of the year. I go right back to the base of that and I give it a quick little cut in there. You can see there's where the ear was. The ear is now loose. Same with this side, the little white lines that go right back to the base of it, give it a quick little cut. And just keep slight tension on it. So then when we get to the eyes, you can see the kind of white lines again. So here I dig in a little deeper. I don't put too much pressure on now. Otherwise it makes a really big eye hole. There, we've got the eyes off. Now we're into the cheeks. Once you're past that bone, you can stick a knife right in there and that loosens that up. Same on this side, you can feel kind of the end of the bone, stick the knife in. Then just continue to skin down the nose. And then you're going to hit a place where it's no longer bone, it turns to cartilage. And then we're going to cut that cartilage down. That leaves the nose on the pelt. Now we've hit his top teeth, just pull him off. And then the bottom lip, we can just cut off. So then, So now what's left is just to take a little bit of the flesh off on a muskrat there's very little to take off just a little bit of fat deposits typically under their arms a little bit on their cheeks sometimes uh, just give me one sec I'll be right back
Okay, I just grabbed the stretcher. So, just pull them on top. Pull the hide down nice and smooth. And this is a pretty tiny wrap. So, it doesn't take up very much of the board. Anyway, there are lots of different ways, lots of different methods that uh, people use for fleshing. I use an old serving spoon. It just scrapes that little bit of fat and extra stuff off. This guy really doesn't have very much. Um, you see this red here? That's called a saddle. Um, it's a thin membrane that goes over the skin on lots of animals we don't take that off and muskrats one of them um, if we see fat underneath of it then we can scrape it like this to get the fat deposits out so there you can see this white line here right next to the the red the saddle that white is fat so we're just going to scrape it down and you can see it just pulls it right out of there. The saddle kind of folds over and out of the way. So we'll do the same on this leg as well. Now just a little bit down on the bottom here. Okay, so that part's done. So now we just take some push pins. I start at the top. I know there's different ways of doing this. I put one in there. Then I go to the sides. Put the pin in. I give it a little wee bit of a pull, not very much. <clears throat> we all call these boards stretchers, but uh, in reality they're not. We don't want the hide stretched out very much because the more we stretch it out, the thinner it becomes. So we want them centered. <clears throat> so here again on the, the tail, I just pull it down so that it's snug. I don't put any pressure on it at all. The thicker the hide, the better. A little bit of fat left here, we'll get that pulled off. There. So on the fall rats, you can see this black line. That means that they're not quite prime. The leather is not as thick as it will be midwinter, especially, and also in, or actually late winter and spring. Uh, so fall rats, one of the reasons that I don't go after them very hard is because there's not a lot of value in them. Um, this is the last couple of years, probably uh, about a $2 rat. 
so my uh, 14, 15, 16, 17 rats that I've got in the last week <laughs> doesn't bring a lot of money, but that's okay. Um, so now I don't have uh, holes drilled in these stretchers yet. So what I do, I put a tack here and then I lean them up against the wall and that keeps the hide away and lets air movement. Um, ideally, you're supposed to keep your skinning shed about 60 degrees and some air movement. Um, I have a wood stove and a fan, so it hits 60 twice as the temperature goes up and as it comes back down. Uh, currently, that's the best I can do. Um, don't know what else I can tell you. That's kind of it for now. I hope that it was informative. Uh, if anybody has questions, just put them in the comments below. Um, and like I said, any uh, any trappers that have uh, suggestions, I like constructive criticism. I've only been back into trapping for about four years, so I can always learn. Hope you guys all have a good day and uh, talk to you soon.